Adrienne Trescott is really asking for it this time. In her award-winning stand-up comedy show, she jokes about rape all while sending a message on how misguided commentary on the subject often is. Oh, she's also doing this half-naked. Take a listen. Take a look. If you don't want to get raped, just don't do any of those things, right? So no makeup, no mini skirts, no booze, no sexy dancing, and you should be pretty much just fine, like in India and Iran. <laughs> Welcome to the doc, Adrian. Hi, Siva. Thanks for having me. So you were a performance artist. Now you're a comedian. Why now? Why asking for it? Um, I think I just got it in my head that it might be an interesting way to try to um, say some things that I wasn't at the time hearing out in the world so much about like rape culture, the way we legislate it, the way we joke about it. Um, and you know, I'm a, I'm a big believer that comedy and humor is a great way to talk about weird stuff. It certainly is. Now, are you a feminist? Are you an activist? Is that part of the motivation behind the show? Um, I'm a performer. I'm definitely a feminist, but um, I think as a performer, I like to take on kind of tricky projects that are hard this to pull tricky. off. This yeah. is tricky. This is a tricky one. Tricky. I thought this could fail, so I'll give this a go. Um, but it's been really fun. And how long has the show been going on for? I actually made it in 2013. Okay. So um, I feel like back then it was like pre Tina Fey and Amy on the Golden right, Globe, right. pre Broad City and Amy Schumer, and right. uh, it was right after the Daniel Tosh kerfuffle about you know his comeback to a heckler. So it was all really kind of tense. Well, just explain that a little. How um, did that uh, play into your show and and yeah. I was already making the show, right. and then this moment came up, which seems kind of ancient at this point, but a couple years ago, Daniel Tosh had a comeback to a heckler who said she didn't think rape jokes were funny, and he said, now infamously, um, wouldn't it be funny if I raped her right now, or wouldn't it be funny if like five guys raped her right now? And though certainly people had made jokes like that before and since for some reason that was the tipping point that really got a pretty large scale conversation going about it um wherein i felt like a lot of guys were super reactionary right. and a lot of women were expressing how fed up they were with just like hearing that kind of stuff did his comment change your script Oh, it just made it fiercely topical. It was a, I mean, in some ways, it was a real gift. I should, <laughs> I should write him a thank you letter because I was already working on it. <laughs> That's great. And then that happened, and I was like, oh, I, my I, God, I have to right, finish this I, show right now. <laughs>
The show um, is a lot of different sort of comic and satirical ways of looking really broadly at all the things that touch on rape, like legislation about it, pop culture mm -hmm. stuff. Right. Um, so yeah, I'm not I'm not like pushing the point like I'm asking for it. Am I asking for it? What's going to happen? But it's there in the room. And it's definitely a subtle nuance of the show. But what's not so subtle, <laughs> and I think this is my point, is that. If someone's hoo-ha is on stage, at the viewers, the audience, could be distracted from the message by what they're looking at. No? Do, yeah, you, do, people, you, not, do you see what I'm getting at? Yeah, yeah. People have asked me that a lot. Um, I can say resoundingly that um, certainly people are looking. Like, they're going to have a look. I'm well aware of that. But they're also listening. Like, I do think, I wish I could curse on TV, I can't. I do think comedy is more powerful than that. <laughs> like, you can go anywhere in our culture. It's really easy to get an eyeful of a lady. No, you're, so, no, you're right. So but something may be, okay. come to my show, and I think that part of their brain is still ready to listen. But what I'm saying is what, everything that you seem to say in the show seems to me very important, and I tried to watch as much as possible before meeting you. But my point is when you're looking at... Uh, someone's body in that way, yeah. then half your message gets, uh, gets lost after the person has acclimated to what they're seeing. It takes them a while to get used to seeing you in that way, yeah. and then half the show's over, or 15 minutes of the show's over, and then it's like, oh yeah, now I'm going to start listening to Adrienne and her message. Um, I've designed the show to sort of address all of that stuff, so the first 15 minutes of the show sort of, I think, takes care of a lot of um, the silent questions right. that I imagine I appreciate that audience. answer. That's, that's terrific. And, um, make, and I put people at ease because I know some people are like, oh, God, there it is. <laughs> there she is. How close is she going to come? Is it going to come? <laughs> You know, all the weird names that people call it. Like, yes, there's a vagina like, in the right. room. Yeah, we can say that word. But there's That's really okay. funny stuff happening <laughs> with the vagina. <laughs> and um, uh, very inventive things. And um, I heard and you're I talented, just, Adrian. I think audiences, uh, you know, whether I'm naked or not, I trust that audiences bring their brains to show and that they're more likely to pay attention if you challenge them with The whole point stuff. of being naked is that we lose our brains. What are you talking about? Well, <laughs> no, but I think that's funny. Like, the, you know, part of being naked to lose your brain is, yeah, that's true if you're having sex or you're, like, streaking or you're skinny right. or anything. But um, it's also, it can become pretty banal when you acclimate to it. If you're right. not, like, I'm, if I'm not parading around the room doing, like, dance moves and angles that are, like, look at my vagina and, like, think of me as a sexy. Oh, I'm being a comedian and people right. are listening to the jokes. So uh, what has the audience reaction been? Uh, and is it also cultural? Because I know you're... You're really well known in Australia. Yeah. And they're pretty liberal, so they may be more receptive. <laughs> yeah, it's been pretty great. Like, I, I've performed it in the UK and Australia more, but um, I've performed it a bit in the States, and audiences have been great. I find the more mainstream the audience um, and the venue, uh, the more fun I have, like the more mixed yeah. the crowd is, if there's like guys who Certainly. are there on their own in the front row, and then <laughs> also like young sure. women who. Um, you know, and people who are coming because they're not sure about me right. yet, if they should right. trust what I'm up to or not. So when all that's in the room, it's really fun. And I reckon that's true for any comedian. Like, and the more mixed the room, the more fun. How do you compare yourself to other comedians who also do rape jokes? As the best. <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> no, good, good, um, good plug. I, th I probably have the most, because I've got an hour of them, you know, um, which I think speaks to the fact that it's actually... Um, a topic that's really, it's a gold mine for satire. Not the act itself, right. never funny. Not the victim, never, a, of course, never of the point of a punchline for me and my taste. Um, but that said, all the stuff surrounding it has become sort of absurd and ludicrous at this point. And I think that's why we are seeing so many other women go into this topic for comic and satirical material because um, there's a lot of people out in the world saying a lot of incredibly stupid stuff and at a certain point stupid and absurd can become funny and then if you start joking like sure. if you start making the idiotic you know state representative who actually thinks like a baby from a rape is not only a gift from god and a miracle but also like just th that's what would happen in your body because um 
you know, a woman's body wouldn't allow her to get pregnant if it was really a rape. If you start making fun of that guy, right, it takes a lot of power away from him. And exactly. people do not vote an idiot. Well, they do vote an idiot, and we've seen that. But thank God, not at the moment. And uh, <laughs> but you know, I do think yeah. those those. Um, Dudes who are actually running for office would like I wouldn't give them the keys to my car if they actually think those things about women's bodies. They seem unbelievably stupid. And Absolutely. Um, and if everyone starts finding them to be like a sort of hilarious clown, they're not going to keep getting into office. So we, I think comedy is so. really powerful in that way. It is very well said. And Thanks. thank you for wearing pants today. Oh, Appreciate my pleasure. <laughs> I didn't really. I just wore a dress. <laughs> Folks, please be sure to watch Adrienne this Saturday. She's performing May 30th at Joe's Pub right here in New York City for a special midnight performance. Go check it out. Check out her website, which is adriantruscott.com. And keep the comments coming, shift heads, right here on the side of your screen. Stay with us. A very special special and hysterical guest joins us next. This is the docket. Hey, YouTube fans. I'm Luke Russert. Thanks for checking out our MSNBC channel. Subscribe by clicking right here and click any of the videos over here to watch the latest breaking news, mini documentaries, conversations from shift and other digital exclusives. Check it out.